Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Little Underrated. Uh, this will be the part three of the conversation we were checking out between RP and Shreedam. They are talking about a lot of things uh, regarding what could and shouldn't be done on the very first day, the very first week of a job. We have already checked out part one and part two. Uh, in case you haven't seen those videos, please go to the video section of our channel Little Underrated and you can find those videos over there. This video will be continuation of those conversation and the last part. Let's jump to the video. No, no, but I actually, I was thinking, <laughs> when you were talking about story, I was thinking about a lot of managers I knew who, well, not a lot, a couple who totally fucked this up and were terrible in their <laughs> first week. Uh, and maybe that's the interesting thing. Like, what are things you absolutely should not do, either as a manager or as a reporter? Like, I went as a manager. Uh, I had one person who shall again remain unnamed for posterity, who uh, I think a few of us were hired, and this person said we had coffee and he said something like well we see how we work out for the first eight months and if it doesn't you won't be here anymore right and i was like oh my god like that was not very motivating at least not in the way he delivered that was like don't i think yes um it took us a while to get here but i think coming from a place of empathy as a manager as a you know ceo founder whoever you are but you know this person's new egos are a little fragile um everyone goes through imposter syndrome and uh, it's okay to just like you come from a place of empathy you don't have to be like hey you're going to do this you're going to crush it or else you're out you know that's just it, it just reflects really poorly on the culture of the organization because you are right now setting the culture right like you're the person that they are like looking up to right now so i think it's important to just come from a place of empathy and be earnest uh, really want to like help this person be successful. Um, I've generally found that, you know, when you have managers or peers who really want you to thrive and be successful, the entire company moves forward. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like such a cliche, such a kumbaya thing to say, but you know, it's just, it's one of those things where it turns out that if, if you're able to give them a sense of confidence, they are able to set aside everything else that's like, you know, nagging away in their heads on like, am I good enough and all of that and really focus on being productive. And when that happens, you can ship stuff faster, you can remove egos and just like work on things together. So come from a place of empathy and really like come from a place of helping this person be successful and letting them thrive. Um, don't do stuff where, yeah, I've had a situation where uh, this person who's hiring is like, I used to do your job. Oh, gosh. Um, now we have you. We'll see. I just think I'm better. And you're like, okay. But coming from a place of competition or trying to be... Coming from a place of jealousy, yeah. I think is never a good idea because, look, you've hired this person. You need help. You, it's okay to acknowledge the fact that, you know, okay, you've done this job at one point, but you also need to acknowledge that you need the help and that's why this person is here and not be like i've done this job i don't think it's like that important or that critical yeah. or it's easy the flip side of that by the way is i think if you're a new employee i've seen so many people mess this up is you don't want the person that comes in and says well i don't know about you guys but this is how we did my old job True. and you know yeah. and it was perfect over there yeah. uh, and you know like Trust me, like nobody wants to work with a new person who, who's like, I've come from a better place and I know how to do this already and yeah. you folks are all muppets. Like nobody wants to Nobody listen. wants to deal with that. Yeah, and even if it is true, and sometimes it may be true. But and so I think what you really want to do is you really approach every place from first principles yeah. and understand the dynamics of the place, why they made the decisions they did. And maybe you are right and the thing that you used to do is actually better. And yeah. it could be something simple, right? Sometimes for example, um, you know, like for example, people from Amazon like to write documents in a particular way, people from Facebook or Uber have have a particular uh, uh, mindset about data and product. It, it may be, and there are often like lessons you can bring to bear, but nobody wants to hear that the place you came from is, you feel that is superior than the, the place that everybody is working in, even if that is true. So I think coming in, uh, being humble, feeling like you want to learn the place from first principles and understanding why they do things they, yeah. they want to, uh, I think is super important. And 
maybe someday you've built up enough credibility, you have enough of these wins that we talked about, and then yeah. you can be like, well, hey, folks, let us yeah. switch our doc writing format to the one that Jeff Bezos like. But until then, yeah, that makes sense. I think also, I think from a manager standpoint, um, let them ask dumb questions. You know, let it's a new employee. You don't have to like. You don't have to be irritable or annoyed or be like, well, why are you asking that? Or get defensive. Don't get defensive, uh, especially if you have questions on, if, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, look at the data, look at revenue, look at all of that. So if they have questions on like, so how does this work? Explain it to them. Come from a place of like, the, the easiest hack that is available to managers is to be vulnerable and be candid and open and make your problem their problem too. So that, you know, you can win them over and get to like solve this together. Like there is no greater joy than to recruit people into solving problems together. Um, and I think uh, I've seen a few managers just miss this hack by just being like, everything is great. Everything is perfect. You know, what are you talking about? There is no issue. Or just being like facetious about the real problems. Um, and you don't have to spend all day just shit talking other people or, you know, talking about how miserable you are or whatever. But... I just think it's like it's okay to be a bit vulnerable and talk about the problems that you're yeah. having to recruit them into solving them for you. Yeah. And I think well, part of the problem I think sometimes is like, you know, if you're a report and if you're a new person, your manager may not have listened to this podcast or listened to this and done this and you're kind of stuck and it is now on you to figure out how to make up for that. And I think like a few things I think are very key. The first is to really understand what are the rhythms and systems that your team and organization does? Like, for example, True. what are the key meetings? Mm. Is there a stand-up? Is there a weekly sync meeting? Is there a monthly product review? You know, whatever it is, figure out what the cadences are. Make sure you at least, you know, just attend them or watch in on them when possible. That's number one. Uh, figure out all the channels, like Slack channels, email lists, you know, whatever be they may be. Just join all of them. Go read it because you get a sense of what is the cultural tone, the language, the things on top of people's minds. So when you're a new person being like, hey, what about you know idea X? You can be like, well, they're actually dealing with something else right now. That's number two. Third part, actually, I think I saw I saw one uh, exec at Twitter do this very well when this person joined the company is when I mean, you're new, nobody knows what you're doing. And they're like, yeah, I don't know what this person's up to. So send an email like mm. every week. Mm. Uh, and you can maybe stop this after a while, but some people do it forever, which is great. And just be like, what are you up to, right? Like, you'd be like, I met X, Y, and Z. Uh, I checked out this code and looked at it. And I think more than anything, it is going to give your manager a PSB, like, oh, that's what this person is doing. And almost always somebody be like, hey, you should meet this other person too. They'll always appreciate it because nobody else is doing this. They'll always appreciate it. But send out a weekly email, at least for the first couple of months or so, and it's going to be it's going to wonders by you. Yeah, I think it's great advice. I think uh, you used to do that at Facebook. I used to do that at Facebook. Um, again, I used to take a very metrics oriented approach. I'm like, yeah. let me tell you where like we are with respect to this product. So basically, a very particular so. format. Do you want to talk about the HPM formats? Yeah, it's called HPMs. Uh, I think it's called Highlight People and Me. Yeah, I, I, That's what, the, the, which the, made no sense, but the origin of the acronym <laughs> is lost in the midst of time. Right, but the intent of it is to send a weekly update on. Uh, you know, what are the highlights for this week? Uh, what did you ship something? If you ship, what does it look like? You know, what general metrics, growth, lack of thereof, all of that. And then problems that you want to, that you've encountered, that you're fixing. What's the plan for next week? I kind of like, you know, the whole thing is about like a page, you know, in like a one pager style. So it shouldn't be a super long rambling thing. Nobody's going to read that. I like to send it out on Fridays. Um, like afternoon, like a little bit over past noon, because I think, you know, later than that, different time zones, you know, people start like going home. And so um, I want to basically send this out to tell people, this is what I've been able to do for this week. Uh, these are the challenges. This is, uh, these are the good stuff. And this is what next week's going to look like. And if there are asks, you know, tag the right set of people or be like, hey, does anybody know X, Y, and Z? And it, to what you said, people are always willing to help. Like you will be amazed that when you ask for help, how many people will answer and be like, I don't know that exact thing, but I know this person who might have this thing and would like tag them. And so this just spreads and also it helps you build your network and uh, you know, just help you solve problems faster together. Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, oh, promotions. 
So right. Why right. do we want to talk about promotions in this context? You know, we talk about uh, an employee joining a workforce, uh, new we first week at a new job kind of thing. I feel like promotion is very similar in the sense of like, even though you've been at the organization, it's a new responsibility probably. It's like added scope. So um, you've been through a cycle, a, you know, a review process. Your manager comes and tells you, hey, congratulations, you've been promoted to this level. You are now in charge of this other thing in addition to this thing. So from the next day or whenever it becomes effective, that's your scope. It's different than what you've been doing so far. So in a sense, this is still a new job. So I think it's still very relevant to talk about it as new scope, new job. What do you do there as, as a part of the promotion yeah. process? Yeah, I think every promotion is basically, like you said, a totally new job. Yeah. And you are trying to figure it out and the people around you are trying to figure it out. Yeah. So I think it's almost a critical to reestablish everything that you did as in a starting. For example, every time you get like a big role change, for example, you might be taking over a team or taking over a project, you want to go meet everybody. Just like we did in the beginning, be like, hey, I'm now the person doing X. Uh, it's been a while, but a lot of get chat up. Everyone will appreciate it. They'll probably have something they need. They may not have been able to ask you when you were in your old job, but now you run the team or you're a VP or you're a manager. And now they're like, oh, I can now ask you for this because you have more influence. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is very key. Also, your relationship with them would have changes. They might be more of a peer now yeah. than somebody, you know, sort of the upper echelons of the organization. Yeah. And you, that dynamic can uh, shift also. Uh, it's also going to give you a different sense of the organization because you know how like the levers you can pull that you're not able to uh, before. So I actually, by the way, I think one of the failure traps that I think people run into with promotions, they don't do this. And they treat it like as a, a version of their old role, mm. uh, especially when you go from an individual contributor to a manager, which mm -hmm. is maybe a whole other podcast we can do. Yeah. And then they fail because it's a totally different job. They haven't re-established relationships. The expectations are totally shifted. Yep. And they just went in blind. They're like, oh, you know, I'm just going to work harder and I'm going to you know, have a different title and paid more. And that is never Do different. you almost think you should treat promotions as if you've quit that job and joined the next week in a different uh, title role capacity? Is that the best way to look at it? Uh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, a friend of mine uh, said this, and it's very true for execs for everybody. He said, when you get a totally new role, uh, send out an email about uh, what your priorities are, uh, who you are, you could be like, you could basically reintroduce yourself to the mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. And because I'm sure there are people who don't know you as well, uh, who may be newer, uh, and then what are your priorities? And then just be consistent, right? And they'd be like, oh, wait, you know, this person used to be an engineering lead, but now they're running this whole organization, you know, right, and right, maybe right. I need to talk to that person. So I would say theater is a total transition into something totally new. Mm -hmm. And the real mistake you can make is to assume it's your old job and people think of your old job and it's not. That's not the case at all. That's right. I think for you to be comfortable enough to do that and communicate with everybody else as a part of the promotion process, be very clear and get that information from your manager on what does this promotion mean? And in the sense of, does your title change? If yes, what, when, when does it become effective? Does your reporting structure change? Do you have more reports? Uh, do you have like adjacent orgs that are now going to report to you? What does the promotion really look like? But also really understand what does it now mean to be successful in this new role? Right. A lot of people kind of miss that because they kind of say, oh, well, you know, my title is now senior, whatever. But great. What does it mean to be successful in this role? And uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, if it's a big company, you'll have a ladder and you're a part of this structure. And from you to go from this ladder level to the next one, it means you have to demonstrate scope or be successful at this particular level of scope, which means you have to then figure out what that means for your job. Yeah. Um, so are the goals different now? If you're in sales and marketing, do the, the revenue that you're driving or partnerships you're driving or any of that, what does that change? Uh, is it an amplification or is it completely different? So yeah. be really clear about that. Yeah. You know, I remember being really caught by surprise, uh, you know, when I didn't do what you just said. Like, for example, I think being an individual contributor manager is a big jump. Being a manager, manager of managers is a very big jump. And yeah. when I went from, like, being sort of a manager to somebody who runs multiple managers, runs an organization, is that you you can no longer know all the work oh, being yes. done in detail. That was tough. And it's really messed you up, especially if you kind of really prided yourself on knowing all the details. And the second part of it is, 
people will now interpret what you say without telling you about it. You almost have to do internal press to be like, well, this is what I said and this is what I actually mean because otherwise you'll be surprised how often somebody would come, I heard you said X in this meeting and you know I thought this meant Y for my team and they're upset at you or they go do something. And that really surprised me because that was not the case when I was running a team of like a handful of people and I knew everybody myself. Yeah, I saw that firsthand too when you would go from managing a few individual contributors to managing managers, every communication becomes lossy mm -hmm. in the sense like, uh, what you tell you, you know somebody else when they tell other people some of the packets get lost so to speak <laughs> and, uh, and then you're like no 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 and you know I, a couple of times I had to go back and be like that's not what I said or that's not what I meant and you know course correct and like set the strategy again and like make it really clear that it was not offending a person or you know uh, pivoting a particular product direction or any of that so um, that it becomes like I think you really see this go when you, the org just grows balloons or when you get promoted and you now are responsible for so much more so be really clear you might also need to change your communication style right. you might need to do a lot more broadcast like you said internal press so broadcast communication where you write posts you talk about why you're doing what you're doing and I think then talking about culture the philosophy of doing things I think becomes really important because you want to inculcate the, the reasoning behind like you want this this whole culture of like being open about why you're doing things and reasoning behind uh, your strategy and thinking and all of that yeah, so and, yeah and you want to especially repeat yourself like you'd be surprised oh that's right there's no such thing as repeating yourself too much you want to make have the simplest message yeah. and you want to say it again and again and again yeah exactly I mean we are all getting hit all the time by information and I think it just gets lost and so you just have to repeat yourself and it's not a bad thing you just have to get really good at doing it um and uh you know I, you know at some point i think we should do a full episode on like managers and advice for managers because i think you and i have like stumbled our way and learned a whole yeah. lot into how to be a good manager um and especially manager of managers as the team and organ structure grows and so yeah okay is there one thing that people should not forget or they forget everything else what is one thing they should try and get right in the future? Uh, you, you've demonstrated this by doing it. And uh, um, this is something I tell a lot of people when they're getting started. Uh, just bring enthusiasm, bring energy. Like, you are here. You've made it. You've gotten this job after whatever process. Just come in with this attitude that you're going to crush it like you would be shocked how many people will be on your side and willing to just help you be successful if you just even if you knew nothing just brought that enthusiasm and brought that energy into just solving the problem and just being there for the company for the art for the team well uh, that's true I, i'm going to pick one that i think you do uh, uh which is i think going to the absolute core truth of things and that could mean data that could always, always mean playing with the product, getting familiar with it, whatever be the product. Uh, that could mean going out in the field and doing first-hand research. But it, it is invaluable to have somebody go to the absolute truth of things, you know, and make their own conclusions. Especially when you have fresh perspective, you're coming in new, you haven't, you don't have the biases or the history, and you're like, well, why does this number say X? Or, you know, I talked to a few customers and they don't seem to figure this out, whatever it is. I think going to the absolute truth by yourself, I think is super, super key. And it's going to be a lot of hard work. It's going to be a lot of like, uh, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I don't understand this, but I think it's going to be really hard. I think so too. I, that, that's the part that I love doing. I do it in the form of data, talking to customers, using the product yourself. Uh, do it from a first principle standpoint. Don't do it from like place of skepticism or being cynical about things, but really do it because if, if this whole world didn't exist and you had to build this from scratch, what would you do? Like really come from like first principle standpoint and like come with an attitude of just wanting to learn and being curious. Yeah. Love it. Well, this was great. You know, this is really fun. This, this is super fun. Uh, well, I mean, I hope this is fun for you folks. And if you're watching, listening to this, let us know, drop a comment or send us a DM. Uh, tell us about your experiences yes. with your first job. Yeah. I mean, how was your first job like? How was the first week at your first job like? Um, and uh, if you are a manager especially, did you do specific things that made it easier for a new person to come join and be a uh, part of your team? Uh, we would love to know if anything that we missed, just add it to the comments. 
but also if there are uh, things that you found really useful um, and uh, or if you disagree with us in any of these, you know, that might yeah. also be true. Just let us know. We'd love, love to hear from you. Yeah. And if you have questions about stuff you're going through in your job, you know, and, you know, yeah. and which other people might also be going through, send us in. We're going to try and do more of these. Month. But till then, thank you so much for thank listening, you. watching, subscribe. Thank you. Bye bye. It was a great conversation. Anyone who is working in the corporate is respective of what level he or she is working on. Uh, I think this conversation will be really enjoyable uh, and learning as well. Uh, we'll keep on checking these kind of useful informations. Uh, till then, please subscribe to our channel Little Underrated and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.